Starship's path to Mars is one of those things that looks simple on a diagram, but the moment you dig deeper, nothing about it is simple. A lot of people ask a perfectly reasonable question. If Mars is over there and Earth is here, why doesn't Starship just point its nose at the planet and fly straight? Why does every trajectory look curved, tilted, bent, or stretched? The reason is that straight lines don't really exist in space, not in the way we intuitively think. In this video, we're going to unpack exactly why SpaceX must follow a curved trajectory to reach Mars, why a straight line path is essentially impossible, and why the route Starship takes is one of the most elegant pieces of orbital mechanics ever developed. Before we get into the details, if you enjoy real engineering breakdowns, technical storytelling, and deep dives into SpaceX's architecture, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and follow us on Facebook where we post daily updates on launches, Raptor engine testing, Starship development, and everything happening at Boca Chica and Cape Canaveral. Let's begin with something most people don't think about. Earth is moving. Right now, as you're watching this, our planet is racing around the sun at roughly 67,000 miles per hour. Mars is also moving, but at about 54,000 miles per hour. So even before Starship leaves the launch pad, both planets are orbiting the sun along massive curved paths. If Starship simply launched in the direction we see Mars in the sky today, by the time it got there, months later, Mars would be millions of miles away, far ahead along its orbit. So the first big point is this. Starship isn't aiming where Mars is, it's aiming where Mars will be. This alone means the flight path can't be straight. It must be curved because it's trying to intercept a moving target. Now let's add another layer. The moment Starship leaves Earth's orbit, it falls under the gravitational control of the Sun. Not Earth, not Starship's engines, the Sun is the dominant force. A lot of people picture the spacecraft blasting through open space like an airplane, constantly thrusting, constantly steering. But that's not how interplanetary travel works. Once Starship finishes its departure burn from Earth orbit, the engines shut down for months, from that point on, the spacecraft coasts along a predetermined orbital path. That path is shaped by gravity, not by continuous thrust. Think of Starship not as a rocket flying to Mars, but as a tiny object placed into a new orbit around the Sun. To reach Mars, it needs to shift from Earth's orbit, which is a smaller circle, into a larger orbit that intersects Mars's path. The most efficient way to make that change is a maneuver called a Hohmann transfer. Instead of brute forcing a straight line, Starship performs a short, powerful burn in the direction Earth is already moving. That burn increases its orbital energy, stretching Earth's circular orbit into a long elliptical one that reaches outward to Mars's distance. This is one of the most unintuitive parts of orbital mechanics. To travel farther away from the sun, the spacecraft doesn't point away from the sun, it accelerates forward. By doing so, it climbs into a higher orbit naturally. So already, the path isn't straight, it's an orbital arc. But now, let's walk through the entire mission profile, because this is where things start to feel like a large, complex choreography. Starship begins in low Earth orbit, traveling roughly 17,500 miles per hour. At that point, it's nowhere near ready for interplanetary travel. It needs fuel, lots of it. That's where the tanker starships come in. Multiple tanker flights rendezvous in orbit, dock nose to nose, and pump hundreds of tons of subcooled liquid methane and oxygen into the outbound vehicle. This tanker ballet takes place within a narrow orbital corridor. Timing matters, lighting conditions matter, and every burn must line up with extreme precision. Once Starship is fully loaded, it positions itself for the trans-Mars injection burn. Here's the surprising part. This burn doesn't aim at Mars. It aims at a very specific point in space, an empty spot that Mars will occupy six to eight months later. The burn increases Starship's velocity by several thousand miles per hour and sets it on a massive elliptical orbit around the Sun. The engines shut down, and from that moment until arrival at Mars, Starship is essentially falling through space along the curve created by its new orbit. This is also where things get tricky. Earth's orbit and Mars's orbit aren't in the same plane. They're tilted relative to one another by about 1.85 degrees. 
That may sound like nothing, but on the scale of tens of millions of miles, it's enormous. So the trajectory also has to include an inclination change, a tiny tilt that aligns Starship's orbital path with Mars's orbital plane. This tilt adjustment is one of the main reasons the trajectory looks 3D. From a top-down view, it's curved. From a side view, it's angled. From a 3D perspective, it's spiraled. A straight line simply cannot achieve all of those adjustments without using an impossible amount of fuel. To force a straight path, Starship would need to burn constantly, for weeks or even months, spending fuel the way a jet burns kerosene. It would require launching a vehicle far larger than anything humanity has ever built, carrying millions of pounds of propellant. Even if that were physically possible, which it isn't, it would be outrageously inefficient. So orbital mechanics gives us a far better solution. Use gravity. Use the sun. Use the geometry of orbits. Surf along the curve instead of fighting it. Now let's talk about what happens during the cruise phase. Starship will be coasting at tens of thousands of miles per hour. Over time, its distance from Earth will grow into the millions, then tens of millions, then beyond. At any moment during this coast, if you froze the solar system and drew a straight line from Starship to Mars, it wouldn't look aligned. In fact, during the first half of the journey, Starship is actually getting closer to the Sun before it begins climbing outward again. This completely breaks the intuition most people have. The path doesn't look anything like a straight line. It's a graceful curve shaped by the Sun's gigantic gravitational well. About halfway through the journey, Starship will be millions of miles from Earth, millions from Mars, and right in the middle of its elliptical arc. Small, mid-course corrections happen here. These are tiny burns, sometimes just a few feet per second of delta-v, that make sure the spacecraft hits the exact corridor at Mars months later. And that corridor is razor-thin. If Starship approaches too high or too low, it risks missing the planet entirely. Mars's gravity isn't strong enough to capture a spacecraft unless the trajectory is extraordinarily precise. People sometimes picture Mars as a magnet pulling the spacecraft in. That's not how it works. If the trajectory is off by even a fraction of a degree, Starship will simply drift past Mars and remain stuck in its own solar orbit permanently. And if the approach angle is too steep, Starship hits the atmosphere too hard and tears itself apart. If it's too shallow, it skips off the atmosphere like a stone on a lake. There is only one entry corridor, one narrow window, and the spacecraft must hit it at roughly 13,000 to 17,000 miles per hour with perfect alignment. That level of precision is only achievable through a curved trajectory, not a straight one. Now picture the final moments. Mars is no longer a distant dot. The spacecraft lines up with the atmosphere, tilts its belly forward, and prepares for aerodynamic braking. This is where Starship's unique stainless steel design shines. Those giant flaps that look excessive on Earth are crucial for Mars aerodynamics. They allow the ship to bleed off immense amounts of velocity using aerodynamic drag instead of fuel. But again, the only way to make this work is if the spacecraft arrives on the correct curved trajectory. And here's the important thing that brings all of this together. In space, you don't point your rocket at the destination. You shape your orbit so that the destination intersects your path. Everything curves. Planets curve. Moons curve. Spacecraft curve. Even light curves when gravity is strong enough. So the question, why doesn't Starship fly straight to Mars, completely misunderstands how the solar system works. Straight-line thinking belongs to airplanes, roads, and ships. Space is ruled by orbits, gravity, momentum, and energy. The curved path isn't a choice. It's not artistic. It's not an animation convenience. It is the only path that works within the physics of our solar system. And when you see that long, graceful arc drawn between Earth and Mars, what you're really looking at is the result of careful planning, deep physics, and decades of experience in orbital dynamics. 
It's the most fuel-efficient, technologically realistic, and physically correct way to move between two worlds. If you're still watching, you're exactly the kind of person who appreciates this level of detail. So make sure you hit that like button. It helps more SpaceX fans across the United States find this video. Subscribe to the channel for more breakdowns of Starship flight profiles, booster recovery, Raptor engine development, and mission analysis. And follow us on Facebook for daily updates, behind-the-scenes news, launch coverage, and everything happening in the world of commercial spaceflight. Humanity's first crewed mission to another planet won't be a straight path. It'll be a masterpiece of orbital mechanics. And when Starship makes that journey, we'll be here to break down every stage, every burn, every correction, and every milestone. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.